you state that the music you make is spontaneous. With that in mind, do you feel that adds a distinct creative spark for you, working in this manner? Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know if there are a lot of other people creating that way. But that's the way that works best for me, is just to kind of sit down and just come up with something off the top of my head and, and see where it takes me. Um, and you know, as much has been made about the album being primarily all done in Iceland, what was the experience like? You said that Iceland changed you and changed how the music sounded. How much of an eye-opener was the whole concept of being in Iceland and recording the whole in Iceland? I mean, it was just, it was completely different from what I was used to. Um, the other recordings I'd made were basically bedroom recordings in Brooklyn, you know, so going to Iceland was a huge change in and of itself because completely different surroundings and also, you know, very unusual, unique, and beautiful. Um, so that was really different and having Alex Summers produce and have, having people guest on the record, it was just completely different from what I was used to. Okay, and having Alex Summers on board, I mean, what was it like having him on board to nurture the sound and, you know, you also had a, a choir length they had to add an extra dimension. You know, you, you had not collaborated previously, what was that like for you? Um, I never had anyone help me with my own like solo recordings, so it was, it was completely different. I mean, I'd never had anyone watching me or listening to me while I made music before. So it was, it was really different, but I trusted Alex and we had a really good, you know, thing going. So um, I really trusted anything that he he said or you know recommended or suggested so it was um it was definitely like a great um first you know collaborative experience as far as a solo record goes you know the title of the album the Pente, it stems from ancient greek literature uh, you know basically i know you like the idea of a potion that can wipe out sadness and you know the record do you feel the record was in the Pente to things that were difficult whilst making the actual record. I know you went through some unfortunate incidents and do you feel it was in the Pente in a way when I'm making the actual record? Absolutely. Um, you know, I feel like when I make music in general, it's really cathartic. So um, the whole experience was cathartic in a way. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I didn't want it to be like too literal that the album was in the Pinthe for anything that was kind of like bummy that happened during the making of. I just I really liked the idea of, you know, just drinking a potion and all your sorrows and sadnesses go away. Um, but it, in a way, it was sort of in the Pinthe for things that happened during the making of. And this about our things is such an amazing opening song. It really sets the scene with great tempo and tone. Was this a natural choice to open the album? I think so. I mean, when we were doing the sequencing, it just kind of seemed like the perfect, you know, first song because it kind of sort of almost foreboding in a way. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Okay, and the harbinger. You know, this, this here's a song that you know again stunning soundscapes and. You know, what were you and Alex hoping to capture with the essence of this song? What kind of atmosphere were you hoping to create? You know, was it, was it perhaps organic or was there a specific direction in mind with this song? No, I mean, everything that we made together was just, you know, just really natural. There's never like any intention like, this song is going to be the one that sounds like a triumph and then we'll put, you know, the choir in it. It just all kind of like happened organically. Um, with the Harbinger, that was definitely one that for me it just sort of seemed the most magical because it was like a bunch of different little parts that sort of came together and um, I think the, the emotionally for me it's the most powerful one um, yeah I really I really love that song the most and you know you've stayed for you the human voice you know it's, it's super personal to you you know what's it like for you to continuously explore is it fulfilling and pleasing to continuously explore the human voice as, as you progress further completely I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's the one instrument that is just a part of you. So, you know, and it reflects your, you know, feelings and emotions so clearly. So I definitely would love to keep 
exploring those kinds of things. Okay, speaking of party, you've mentioned that the bus RG50 is so imperative for you. Do you feel that it's a part of you also? How important is that in, in shaping and molding and structuring Julian and Barbic's output? I mean, for me, it's it's really, yeah, it's really, I can't imagine using anything else. I guess if in a pinch, I, I'd have to. Um, but yeah, I've been using it for so long now that it's just, I just, you know, can do it with my eyes closed basically. And I like what it does. Not every loop looper or loop station lets you create three loops that are independent of each other that you can kind of like fade in and out and bring back in or whatever you want to do. So um, it works for me. Playing live, you know, your shows are mesmerizing. They really do capture the audience and you have a unique bond with them. What kind of emotions you get immersed in your performances? What kind of emotions do you feel traveling, playing to different audiences, different traditions, you know, traveling to different places? What's it like for you playing live? Do you feel liberated? I mean, completely. I mean, I love, I love traveling and playing shows. Um, you know, ever since I did it for the first time, I just... I just knew it's something that I really wanted to do, and uh, I love, you know, meeting new people and, and having new experiences and new adventures. So it definitely, um, it definitely affects the way I feel when I perform, for sure. And you know, the different experiences I have in different cities, you know, and you know, sometimes missing home or whatever. Yeah. You know, I suppose the highest compliment an artist can receive is to know that. The listener connects with your music on a personal level, and your music tends to take the listener on a journey. It's transcendent, you know. Dreamlike. What's it like for you to know that your music is being received in such a positive way that people connect with you on a personal level? It's really touching because I mean I experience that also. Um, actually, not that often. I'll get really, really connected to something. Musically, um, so that's a real honor to hear that, that people connect to it in that way. It's incredible. It's really cool. Okay, and Juliana Barwick, you, you've been listening to a lot of Haynes, some Sky Ferreira, a fan of Joanna Newsom. But is it safe to say that nothing comes, comes close to the lullaby performed by Swogun in Emperor of the Sun? Is that still your favorite? Yeah, it's my favorite recording of all time. Okay, and you know, a lot of different ways of describing your music, some call it dreamy, um, some call it dark, haunting. Do you feel Diplo's statement of that it's basically like Hair Bears making love? Do you feel that's the most <laughs> strangest statement you've heard about your music? It's, it's definitely the most unique and amusing, for sure. I mean, I think it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, that's probably the one that stands out the most as being the most unique. Heading forward in the music industry as an esteemed musician, you know, what kind of aspects and what kind of elements do you always hope to maintain and want to stay true to? Just to keep creating things that don't sound like other things and, um, you know, meeting new people and working with new people and having new experiences and, um, you know, just always staying positive and remembering that this is like a true gift to be able to do this in the first place. So. Okay. Juliana, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on such well-crafted and distinct music. Thank, thank you so you. much. Cheers.